Well, considering I moved very early age, you know, I was only six months old when I moved to France, you know, so I can't really be affected by the culture. You know, I had my parents and that was enough. <laughs> Um, as I say, I mean, like, as you can see, the French team, we just won the, the World Cup, you know, France is multicultural, you know, there is a lot of African people living there, you know, from north to south, you know, um, so, yeah, it wasn't, wasn't really different, you know, as a kid, you know, you don't know much, you know, you, you just see the people around you, you get on with it, you don't know what's white to black, what's black to white, you don't do, you don't take any differences, you know, but, um, yeah, as you grow up, you start, you know, literally, realizing that yeah maybe this is not my birth country this is probably not my country and i'm accepted you know but not fully integrated uh, my dad obviously uh, is a big football fan you know he played himself you know not at the highest level but he's a big football fan and uh, i remember we're supporting PSG actually we were in paris i was about three four years old and uh, Obviously, he always take me out, you know, I was the first one, so he has to take me out to go and play and everything. And I started getting involved with uh, all the people, starting playing and literally more kicking their chin than kicking the ball, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, yeah, and he went like, he seems to enjoy football, you know, and everything. And so he literally, at four years old, he just signed me into the, the local club, you know, the suburb, you know, of Nozil Sek. Every, like every kid, you watch people play football, the stars and everything, and I was a big football fan, so remember every birthday it was about football, uh, football boots, balls, or football tape, you know, them big tape, remember them, you know, it's been <laughs> yeah. a long time. So uh, I remember I had Pele, I had Maradona, I had uh, Lothar Mateus tape, I had like uh, Frank Beckenbauer's, you know, I had the Italian tape, the Brazilian tape, my dad, like every occasion will buy me tapes to watch football and everything and literally fall in love, absolutely fall in love with football, but differently to being a fan, you know, I was more like someone who wanted to, to be like them. Mm -hmm. So I was looking at everything they're doing, you know, everything doing and thinking like, oh yeah, I need to do this, yeah, I need to do this, I need to do this, and yeah, got involved more and more, and growing up, you know, everyone was saying I was talented, but I think I was just more physical than everyone else, you know, I, was, I grew up tall very quickly, mm -hmm. you know, so from my age, I got literally put to the edge above because of my size and then two years above because I was still bigger than everyone mm -hmm. and then from there obviously when you put in a situation where you got to play with all the people you kind of learn quicker you know the roots you know to be able to compete with them mm -hmm. and that's really what happened for me. It's, uh, I went the, the hard way with the, you know, it's one of his things. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I mean, obviously, my mum didn't want me to go to any football school until I was, you know, in an age where, like, I could literally look after myself properly. Mm -hmm. I remember Lance came in when I was 12 years old. My mum said he's not going anywhere, he's too young. And obviously, my parents were really into, my mum was like, school, school, school. Forget about football. Mm -hmm. If you're going to make it, you will make it. But I want you to make sure that at school you follow the you follow the process at school so it was like if you don't play if you don't literally study good you're not playing football mm -hmm. it was like that so it was a fright and you know when you love something mm -hmm. you work hard to get it yeah. so yeah so it works out well for me but um it's mainly when i was 16 when i was 16 i started at 15 playing in a in a third division in france with the adult team noisile sec they put me in to uh because they had, they had people missing they say all right you're strong enough, we take you in. I was surprised because I was on the bench against a team called, um, Sel uh, let me try to remember the name. It's a Portuguese team actually, Lusitanos in Paris. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a league game for Noisy Le Sec. I was only 15, you know. Been, I was there with the, the third division team. They weren't professional anyway in France. So I was there and I didn't expect coming in. And the last 30 minutes of the game, the manager said, come, you get involved. And that was the first time I was like, Whoa, it was a bit of a shock because you're playing against adults and everything. Mm -hmm. But it was a good experience. And from there, obviously, we uh, had interest from Bordeaux and Saint Etienne. At 16, my mom thought, okay, you're an age now where like, you know what you can do or what you need to do to carry on doing anything you want to do, really. Mm -hmm. So she, uh, she let me go to Saint Etienne. I shoot Saint Etienne over Bordeaux. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, two years after, I was like out of Saint Etienne. 
was playing for Grenoble. Uh, we got promoted to the second division with Grenoble. I was playing there. Uh, it was good, you know, at time, a good time and everything. But the manager came to me. I was 21, close 22. He came to me and said, literally, you know, um, I'm going to sign all the players, you know, because I want to push again for the pro promotion. I was like, well, what's left with me? So, well, you'll be involved, you'll be on the bench, but you won't play as much as you played last season. And I went, okay, no problem, you know, obviously. But then, yeah, asking advice to all the generation of my team, you know, I spoke to them, saying, what should I do and everything. They all told me, like, you should carry on playing. You know, I had two years left on my contract. I decided to take a gamble. You know, I threw away my contract, left for England on trials, and it did work out well, actually. You know, like, uh, at school you learn English, you know, obviously mm -hmm. it's just academic, you know, what you know, what you need to know mm -hmm. about English. But, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was difficult at first, you know, I had a two years transition before Reading to Brentford, you know, which is another London club. Uh, I was at Brentford for two years, you know, uh, met some great people, start hanging out with them and start picking up the languages, made a lot of mistakes at first, mm -hmm. but they were cool, you know, nice enough to, uh, to, let, to let me get away with it. Yeah. And then uh, by the time I got to Reading, I could speak better English already, you know, uh, two years down the line, I could already speak English and everything. Mm -hmm. So when I got to Reading, it, uh, it just, uh, I fitted uh, straight away, which is, which is great, which was great. What do I remember? Well, uh, well, obviously, we achieved something very special in 2006, you know, we, uh, we got promoted only losing two games in a season, you know, we, I think we hold 24 clean sheets, which for a defender is fantastic, mm -hmm. you know, uh, we scored 99 goals that season, you know, and we got, uh, we got the, we are the record holders of 106 points, you know, I mean, so I can't, yeah, it, it's something that, uh, yeah, people will take time to beat. Mm -hmm. Wolves got, got close this season, actually, Wolves. But yeah, we, uh, we, we wrote down this story. My name is Anne. Yeah, of course, it makes you proud, you know, is uh, one of his things. We, uh, we had me uh, at the time, then we had like other players like Emerson Fai, who came later on to join us, you know, and Siku Baraji. Mm. You know, we also had uh, Andre Biquet, who came to Reading after the year we got promoted and everything. But yeah, it was, uh, it was fantastic, you know, it's one of his things. We, uh, we we there to make history, you know, at least show show the way to our younger generation, you know what I mean? And when you achieve something like that, you can only be proud of what you've done. I think, like, we are lucky. We, uh, we're born with uh, a presence, you know what I mean? We, uh, we're athletic. We are, like, really, um, really good at physical sports, you know. Uh, the only luck we got, probably, at first, is tactical, you know, tactical and, you know, the understanding of the game and what to do and when to do it. That's probably why we're lacking a little bit, but I got educated in Europe, so I had that advantage, you know, to probably the African players who have grown up in Africa. Uh, I would say I was probably less gifted technically than the one here, but uh, the brain, which, you know, literally got taught from the very young age how to understand the, the right way of playing football, because obviously here, you know, I've been in Uganda for a month now, you know, and uh, it's been great. I've been watching football and everything. And I see some great talents, you know, technically, physically, they're on top, you know what I mean? Very quick, skillful and everything. And then there is some moments in the game where you're thinking, why you done that? You're thinking, why are you doing that? It's, that's, it's not logical, you know, and that's probably where, like, we're lacking a little bit in Africa. Mm -hmm. You know, we, are, we need to increase the coaching or improve the coaching, I would say, you know, so we don't make them mistakes who cost us later when we become pro. Um, it was the right time for me to make history. It was the right time for me to achieve what I always wanted to achieve from the very young age. Mm -hmm. been watching Man United, Crystal Palace. They were my favorite team when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And obviously the like of Man City, Liverpool and Arsenal. You're like, wow, I would love to achieve that. One day play against them team or be into one, the, one of them teams. Mm -hmm. And things were going so well for me, so smooth. I mean, I played for Senegal under 21 and 23s. Uh, I captained them for two years, but that was the opportunity for me to make history and achieve what I wanted to achieve. So I thought I need to put my personal gain first before I can go to Senegal, mm -hmm. you know, because going to Senegal straight away, it yeah, probably would have been good, you know, but I would have not been the player I was at Reading if I had done that. And probably I would have not achieved what I achieved at Reading mm -hmm. if I had gone straight away, you know, I was a... 
I was a key member of the team. The manager needed me. I mean, I remember having the conversation with Steve Koppel. He said, listen, they want you, but I need you. You know, literally, said, it's not I want you to stay. It's I need you to stay. It's, he said, if you don't stay, you know, the, team, the balance of the team is going to be gone. You and Eva are working so well, but you're the main pieces of, my, of the puzzle. Mm. And if I don't have you, we might not go promoted. We were... We were like behind Sheffield United, I think, at that time, you know, at Christmas. And I went like, I'm not ready. You know what I mean? It's just one of his set of mind. I mean, you go to Senegalese team, you had El Adi you know, like you had the big names, Salif Jaws and everything. And I'm thinking, how am I going to be competing against them? They, they're all in the Premier League, playing for big clubs. I'm playing at Reading, we're in a second division, you know, championship. Yeah. Going there right now will be, yeah, it will be great because I'm playing well. They might use me, they might not use me, because at the time you had uh, Lamin Jata who was still playing. You had, uh, what's his name, uh, Suleiman Jaora, who was also there. So, you know, and you had, Amdi, uh, you had uh, Abdullah Fai, and I'm, they're all like big players, big names in Senegal. So, me going there, I would be like Nemo, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, me in the big yeah, sea. Yeah. So, I thought, uh, should I take the gamble, go to Senegal, or should I start reading and take the gamble to get promoted and then I'm at the same level as everyone and I, I will expect to be treated the same way as everyone and I choose to stay. Mm -hmm. I choose to stay and probably was, that was probably the best decision I made. It's a big break, you know I mean? Not only like England, there is no break during Christmas, but when we go to the African Cup, it's almost like our team is deprived of like two or three players at the time, you know? Uh, it might not affect so much in France because you know, we got so many different nationality, African who are sometimes not qualified, sometimes qualified, but France is a big market. There is so many of us that we can't all get to the national team, so you compensate, you know, with that. But for teams like England, who goes and get only the best in Africa, you know, like literally only the best in Africa, to lose the African player is a big loss. You know, when Sergio Mane got to leave Liverpool in January, club is like, oh, one minute, I'm not even sure if you're going to be back fit. You know, and that's a big miss for Liverpool to lose Sergio Mane and Mo Salah at the same time. Yeah. You know, that's like the two key members of the team. It's almost like uh, England decide to play the uh, the World Cup in uh, in January, and suddenly like you got the all Harry Kane and all the players leaving. It wouldn't make sense for the league anyway. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he affected African players a lot. He did affect a lot. You know, when it comes to having big moves, we don't get enough big moves because of the situation, mm -hmm. because of that situation, the African Cup. And people thinking ahead, okay, if I lose him, I've got to buy another player, I've got to compensate with him, all right, we better not have him, you know, and have some European players and leave them to later, you know. And, mm -hmm. But now in, yeah, now in July, June, July, it will be perfect for African players to, uh, to achieve their best in Europe. Into strikers fit, you know, they can be in the air, they can be on the floor, and you've got to go pass in front of them to get the ball, and they're not going to let you go that easy. Obviously, they're going to try to hold you or to back up on into you, so stop you from there. So if you got that strength going forward, you can always, you know, you know, make the move out of the way, and literally then you got to get the right technique. I mean, you know, being there strong, you know, push forward, then. Get